Hey, welcome back to my channel, Duct Tape Mechanic. Um, if you follow my channel, you know I'm constantly working outside using my angle grinder and welder, and uh, I've always had to draw power from inside my shed, so I decided to uh, install a outdoor GFCI receptacle, and that's what this video is about. Um, this is something that uh, you can do yourself and save yourself some money. Um, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel, Duct Tape Mechanic, for more DIY and tinkering videos. So we'll be installing a 20 amp GFCI outlet on the bottom left hand side of my shed because that's where I often set up my portable work table um, just in case if I need to do things like um, use the miter saw or angle grinding. And we'll be getting the power for the outlet from inside the shed. I've already moved around some stuff inside the shed to make some space. The first step to the project is probably the most important, which is turning off the breaker to the shed. There are two main options to explore when mounting a GFCI outlet electrical box. One is a flush mount option, which is cutting a hole and mounting it, the electrical box flush to the surface. And the second is mounting the box directly to the shed. And that's the method I chose. To make sure that the electrical box was going to be attached to something secure, I cut two 2x4 two pieces and attached them to the studs with a 2 inch gap in between them. For this project, you want to use an electrical box rated for a wet environment. Um, these boxes typically have a couple of, of holes in them that you can punch out. And uh, go ahead and punch out the middle hole and then um, place the electrical box on the pieces of 2x4 and mark the hole on the siding. This way we'll be able to drill out from the inside and won't have to worry about finding these studs on the outside. In the next step you want to use an inch and a half or inch and a quarter um, spade bit to make the hole. Um, I made the mistake of making the hole a three quarters with a three quarter inch spade bit despite um, constantly reminding myself to use a larger spade bit. Um, so later on I had to go and expand that hole with a saw. Um, you'll see that in one of the next steps but to avoid this go ahead and use a larger spade bit. Next, I centered the hole in the middle of the electrical box to the hole that I made on the side of the shed and I screwed it into the 2x4s. Um, this made a nice and strong connection. Then I cut the electrical wire inside the shed in half. It is important to remember which one is the line wire and which one is the load wire. Essentially, the line wire is the one that's bringing in the electricity so it's the one coming from the ground and the other wire is the load wire which is going to your appliances or to another outlet. Next I screwed in a wire clamp connector to the threaded hole of the electrical box. Um, this will help keep the wires secure just in case there's a strain on them. And as you can see, I had to expand that hole that I mistakenly drilled too small earlier. Next, I fed the wires through the clamp and tightened down the screws to hold them into place. It's always a little bit better to feed a little bit more wire than you need because you can always cut away the excess. Next, I strip back the wiring. Um, it's important to remember which wire is the line wire and which wire is the load wire. In this case, I have the line on the left and the load on the right. 
Next, it was time to wire up the GFCI. A GFCI is a safety device that breaks the circuit when a ground fault is detected. A ground fault is essentially any incident that causes electricity to be grounded or earthed instead of returning through the neutral wire. A GFCI senses this by monitoring the power coming in through the hot wire and the current going out through the neutral wire. When a difference of 5 microamps of current is detected, the GFCI is triggered and the circuit is broken. The actual wiring of the GFCI is quite simple because each terminal is labeled nicely on the back of the outlet. Um, all you have to do is keep track of which wire is which. And to do that, I just added some black electrical tape to the load wire. Um, the actual labels on the outlet tell you exactly where, which terminal you should put each wire. For example, it'll tell you which terminal is for the hot line wire, which one is for the hot load wire, and the same thing applies for the neutrals of both those wires. Um, as far as the ground is concerned, I just wire nutted the two grounds together and pigtailed them to this green screw. After the wiring was complete, I screwed the outlet to the electrical box. To cover up the GFCI, I'll be using this type of plastic cover. Um, this one is particularly nice because the lid can be locked with a padlock. Um, as you can see, this is quite useful because uh, my nephew tried to stick a screw inside the GFCI while I was filming this. But uh, don't worry, the breaker is still off. Hey! <laughs> no! Attach the cover to the outlet by tightening down the two screws. Make sure you tighten these down fully as this will help the gasket seal. By tightening down the two screws, the gasket between the cover and the electrical box is sealed. However, um, we still need to seal up the space between the electrical box and the shed. And we do that by adding um, some silicone all the way around the box. After all that was done, I went back into the shed and used some insulated staples to tidy up the wiring. After that, I turned the breaker back on and I had to reset the GFCI. When you re reset it, it does a self-test and it should turn green. After that, I plugged in my reciprocal saw, and what do you know, we have power. As expected, the lights on the load side of the GFCI were also working fine. So here's the final product. Um, I like the way how it came out. It's uh, nice and secure because it's screwed into a uh, 2x4s. Um, that's one reason I decided to do that way. It's also watertight and most importantly, childproof.